Welcome to Adventures in Consciousness, the interactive show that offers expansive conversation with pioneering new thought teachers and personal real-time guided journeys into the imaginal realm to access your soul's wisdom and discover how to live your greater story. Here is your host, human potentialist, soul mentor, and consciousness guide, Jennifer Ivanko. Hello and welcome. I'm very excited you joined us here today. Um, I wanted to let you tell you about why I'm doing these, these conversations because um, I think it's important that we all have our own um, journey of expanding consciousness and we all reach for those greater potentials. And today's guest I think is, shares that uh, soul journey or that soul um, desire to share with you, the audience, uh, ways of, of expanding and harnessing our, our greater potentials. Um, my guest today is intuitive, energy intuitive, licensed naturopathic doctor, Cynthia Andrews. Cynthia is the an author of several books on healing, energy, and consciousness, including The Path of Energy, Awakening Your Personal Power and Expanding Your Consciousness, The Path of Emotions, Transforming Emotions into Energy to Achieve Your Greater Potential, and the Path of Presence, Eight Awareness Expanding Energy Practices to Ignite Your Purpose. She has also co-authored several books with her husband, Colin Andrews, who's a veteran investigator of an unusual phenomena. Colin is best known for his pioneering work with crop circles, which by the way, he coined the phrase back in 1983. Uh, there is a book actually I haven't read yet, which I'm very looking forward to reading, which is called the, On the Edge of Reality, Hidden Technology, powers of the mind, quantum physics, paranormal phenomena, orbs, UFOs, harmonic transmissions, and crop circles. That's a lot to say. <laughs> Dr. Cynthia Andrews, welcome to the conversation. Uh, thanks for having me, Jennifer. It's a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> so I want to, we, we have a short time here and I want to get started right at the beginning. Um, from my conversations with people and, and I'm really enjoying meeting people such as yourself, it seems to me that you all share something about this, this journey, this journey of um, consciousness, and that's a curious mind. Mm -hmm. It seems like that's an important ingredient in, in opening the doors. That's so really like funny. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier today, I was having a conversation with someone and I said on my gravestone, although I'm gonna be cremated, that I wanted <laughs> the epitaph to be, um, curiosity is better than being right. <laughs> <laughs> and so City is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about where you started, how that, I mean, that curious mind starts as a child, right? Yeah, I guess it does. You know, in, in my family, it would have been hard not to be curious and it would have been hard not to be curious about consciousness and these things because my parents were really deeply involved in these type of subjects. In fact, my mother introduced me to my husband, Colin. <laughs> But um, it kind of, if I had to define a moment, it would be when I was holding one of my pets. My father was a doctor and we had, people would bring us animals from all over and he would operate on them on the dining room table and whatever else. But I was holding one of my pets when it died and I, and I watched the light go out of its eyes and felt a body that had been one weight suddenly become much heavier. And it just like, was like this light bulb going off that something something had left, but that what left was lighter than what remained. And that was a really interesting paradox to me. And, and that really was what started my um, investigations into energy and my curiosity with energy. Wow, what a, what a concrete experience too, to actually have yeah. that in your hands. Yeah. I think about so many people having wow experiences and not being able to trust them. I mean, how do you come around to to believe in what you're starting to see or experience? How did you, you know, I think that's been one of the most important things for me on, on my journey is to try and make concrete what, to, what, what is really quite um, otherworldly in a lot of ways. And yet these bodies that we have, and this is kind of what my path has uncovered, is, is like these bodies are these incredible vehicles and they have so much greater capacity for reading and understanding and being in the world around us 
and it is very concrete and it is very real. And once you make that connection into your body and start relying on what I call the felt perceptions, and I'm sure other people use that term as well, everything changes. That's interesting. In your work, I, I hear you talk about navigating from that mind through the emotions and into the body. And the body then is a reflection of what where it started, the mind, the body, you know, the, mm -hmm. I mean, you make it practical in that concrete body level with your work. Yes. Yes. I would say that that's absolutely true. And and I have a real dedication to, to opening the doorway into people's bodies. It's like it's not enough that we expand our mind if we leave our bodies behind. Because I have this real conviction that every single thing has function and everything has purpose and we can't just decide we're going to discard this because it's uncomfortable or or decide that this um, was a mistake and and has to be um, corrected in some way it's like everything has function so the job is to find out what is the function and how can it elevate us into our highest and best potential so it's interesting to for me it's almost a flip to think about going in through the body to go back towards the spirit Yes. Yeah. My my um, one of my teachers, um, Iona Marcia Teagarden, who who is just she's a genius. In her work, um, you know, we had these T-shirts, and the motto on it um, was a Jin Shindo, an in-body experience or an in-body um, uh, elevation or whatever it was. But it's true. It's like the body. The deeper you go in the more expansive you become and the more that you can receive and experience the greater reality because the greater reality, our access to that reality is through our body. Well, and I love how you talk about bringing it all together. It's not like we can do one or the other. We have to look at all parts of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, in some ways that's kind of what the chakra system really is, is like the chakra system, these energy centers in our body that are transmuting energy from the surroundings and making it dense enough that we can feel it physically and then interpret those feelings into information that we can use to guide our lives. And those chakras, according to the old Vedic texts, are portals into different dimensions. And so it's like in, 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 some, in some of the teachings I ran into in my early years, everybody was looking at how we would evolve from one chakra to the next until we were enlightened. And, and in reality, I think what it is, is being able to use every dimensional portal at will for the function at hand. And so it's really about all of it evolving together into um, an accessibility. So yeah, that's this, fun. <laughs> the concept of that superhuman too, where you, where you not only in, in this dimension here, but we start accessing other dimensions as well, as far as um, holding, accessing what we need and bringing it here and using it practically. Mm -hmm. yeah. And having it expanded, you know, that's superhuman. Yes, <laughs> yes it's super normal. <laughs> <laughs> super normal, I like that. Um, so in the uh, path of energy, you talk about some wonderful concrete meditations that you offer and you share mm -hmm. with people. were these um things that you experienced yourself that you, i guess you went through each one yeah so some of them um one of them the first one in the book the spiral pillar of light was really from barbara marciniak who is a channel who who channeled the pleiadians for for years through the 80s and she still works she still has a has a large following and she wrote the introduction to my first book um path of energy um, so that came from her and and using it opened up and expanded different things in me. And then some of the first few meditations in the book are, are kind of traditional chakra meditations with my own kind of spin on it and, um, and meditating with the aura. But most of the meditations came about during sessions with clients. I would be working on somebody and I would see and feel because for me it's always both i feel it in my body first and then i see it in my mind's eye and you know i i feel it in her body my body experiences that i see it and so um, most of those 
meditations were seen during sessions with people and utilized in the session and then I would begin to work with it and understand it and, and figure it out and, and write it down. <laughs> and I liked how you said in your book too about um, you not everybody feels things or sees things. Sometimes they hear things or they're, they're different and understanding your own path of, of understanding or knowing. Yeah, I have actually on my website, um, explorationsinenergy.com, I have an intuitive index test that people can take to figure out which way they receive information the easiest. And I think most of us already know, but, but sometimes it's surprising to say, oh yeah, I, I receive it visually, but I also have this backup system involved. And then once you kind of have a sense of the fullness of it, you can begin to experience it in, in deeper ways. So I encourage people to just go on and do it. It's free. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful because I think it's not only important for us to know how we understand things, but sometimes how our partners or other people around us actually experience. That's know? a really great point. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something I run into, especially during COVID when we're locked down with people and you start realizing, hey, am I really communicating with this person? <laughs> do they understand? <laughs> And certainly with today's technology, I don't know about you, but a text can be read in 15 different ways. You can put all these different inflections on it. And it's like, so really all this technology is reflecting back our own, our own inner twists and turns and distortions. <laughs> it's the, our own limitations too. Yeah. I was yeah. um, actually, and I really want to have a conversation with you sometime where we'll go with this other direction, but we'd mentioned even languages and how words and now we're putting the words down on, on text. So you're reading the words, so you're even losing the inflection and the, yeah. it is hard to, uh, to uh, navigate this new world, right? <laughs> yeah. My husband's always talking about how the, we, you know, the new generation coming in will have more contact with um, the digital world than with, with human human stuff and so that whole layer of body language that whole layer of understanding the feeling of the energy we exchange um is going to have to be accessed really differently and so what does that look like <laughs> <laughs> well and some of what uh, we do in these meditations and some of the work when we actually take journeys in this what i call the meta realm people have other names for it it's almost like we need to work that into our technology because we need to meet in that place. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to go back now to your books because I want to get <laughs> onto the um, path of presence and these pillars that you came up with. And what I really love is that it's obviously a journey that you've taken yourself through these different pillars. And can you tell us, just, I know we don't have a lot of time, but just a little bit about these pillars. Um, well, originally these kind of came about as I was looking for in, in the energy work that I do with people, what were the foundational elements that allowed us to kind of go beyond or, or, or go deeper? And um, during that time, as I was figuring them out and as I was writing them and as I was writing the book, my daughter had this, this um, really horrific car accident where she died and um, was brought back and, and each phase of the journey of our relationship and her healing kind of illuminated the pillars that I was working on. And so I incorporated, I incorporated that into, into the book. The publishers weren't too happy about it, but I did it anyway. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so the pillars are all these just different aspects within us that are principles that help us to go, um, to align with our purpose and go deeper. Can you explain, maybe just share with us the where you start when you're doing the pillars and start with the connecting here and now? That's the, first um, the, the, first, the first pillar is the, is the pillar of being. So yes, presence in the present moment. And then we go through the, the pillar of connection and, and alignment and, and boundaries and grounding and centering and um, Gosh, I don't know that I remember all eight of them. All. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. What I what I wanted to show here is there's this beautiful path that you show, but ultimately going towards that authentic self, realizing. Absolutely, it. You know the whole the whole the whole journey to me 
is, is first of all, radical self-acceptance where we totally understand that there is no part of us that isn't functional, N nothing, you know, and, and then how do we use that to the best advantage? And, um, and then within that, I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> I love it when that happens. It's such a, it's such a, you know, be real moment. Um, what was your question? So we were talking about the path, the steps, and that you, you're moving towards that authentic self. Right. Um, so in that total radical acceptance that we have to have to do, we discover that that authentic self is this unique perception that nobody else has. And in this hologram of the Acacia of Record, if this hologram of consciousness, the thing about holograms that is so fascinating isn't really even that when you take a holographic picture and tear it in half, you have two exact replicas of the same picture. And every time you you do that, you have the whole picture encased within each of the pieces. What's interesting is that each of the pieces has the whole picture from its perspective, which means that the perspective of everybody is essential for the whole and whatever it looks like to us from the outside, however we want to judge someone else or, or, or judge anything of any kind, even within ourselves, what we're doing is negating the growth of the whole. We're negating how that little piece of sand in the oyster makes the pearl, you know? Beautiful. I didn't realize that about the perspective in the holographic. That's I, I didn't know. either. Yeah. In my first books, I didn't write about that at all. And then I had, I had this like astrophysicist guy sitting in my office reading my book. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> and, his, and his comment when he closes it is he smiles and he nods his head. And he, and he says, you just missed one point, you know. And, and then he shared that with me. And it was like this bomb going off in my head of how in, utterly important that is, you know, how utterly important it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And doesn't that show just how you needed that astrophysicist, his his unique wisdom to share with your wisdom to make something even bigger. And that's yeah. the true with everybody, everything. Yeah. Um, we often hear, you know, I've, I think you mentioned TM in one of your interviews or something, and that's where I started TM mm -hmm. meditation. And it was all about finding this um, place of bliss and meditation and um, and not and getting away from the ego. Mm -hmm. And going back to what you were saying about um, embracing the body, the mind, the, the, all of it, embracing the ego too, this tool that we have and that perspective we have and, and observing and watching ourselves as we go through this. You know, I'm so glad that you bring that up because I do feel, I feel very sorry for the ego sometimes. <laughs> because in its rightful place, the ego is the champion of our path and purpose, you know. I don't know a single person who's been able to accomplish their mission in life without a healthy ego. The problem is that most of us have unhealthy egos. Most of us have, have um, wounds in our self-esteem that cause this overinflation or underinflation of our ego. And so when we see that, rather than think we have to eliminate and suppress and get rid of the ego, what we really have to do is heal that wound so that our ego can once again take its place as the champion of our path and purpose. And sometimes embrace that wound because there's something there that's absolutely perfect that created you who you are now. It's, it added to your expression of self. I think that's absolutely, it, that's again, is part of the whole idea that there was nothing wasted. You know, there was nothing, there was no mistake. Even the mistakes aren't really mistakes because the growth that you get from it, you can't get any other way. Yeah, beautiful. Wonderful. Now, see, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, it's because we're feeling more than thinking. That's why. <laughs> exactly. um, I did want to bring up, just because right now with, with all these um, natural disasters, we've got the tornadoes, the, the hurricanes. We were supposed to have our, our conversation a few weeks ago, and the hurricane Elsa came through. But we also have fires and floods, and, and there's this sense of fear of challenge that's happening, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I notice a lot of what you're speaking of, or some of what I've heard, is um, the challenges we have in our own emotions, our own life, and how we grow from those. And how the world is actually, Mother Earth here is, is giving us a mirror of maybe this storm, the hurricane. How do we sit in the center of the eye of the storm and let the, everything 
but how do you use nature in, in your work? Well, to me, nature is the essence of everything. Nature is the foundational reality. It is our fundamental reality. What do we have that hasn't come from nature? Absolutely nothing, nothing. All of our technology comes from nature and everything we think we know came from observing nature, right? So, and, you know, in my view, love is really the essence of the universe and everything that we consider to be evil or, or you know, is just simply the absence of love. It just needs to be infilled with love. And there is no place that you can go to feel surrounded and grounded and centered and complete like in nature. You know, it is the, it is the ultimate healing force. And so, yeah, for me, nature is, is the key to everything. And what is happening with earth is really a huge rebalancing because let's face it, we have not understood the pillar of, of, of um, boundaries, you know, we haven't really understood that we can't just have everything we want because we want it, that there are exchanges and there are consequences to actions and, and that when when we take more than we need, something is unbalanced in that. And so we're really in this entire um, medicine, as my, my Native American friends would call what's happening in the earth medicine, you know, that, that we're receiving a dose of medicine about how to respect boundaries and um, respect the life force all around us. And maybe maybe uh, we could say medicine, but we could also say it's an opportunity to, or support, because it's a way to look at how we can bring ourselves back into balance. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I'd love to hear more about your journey about in uh, Native American and what you've learned there. Or, Running down on time here. Um, <laughs> so I did want to hear about your your current activities, your current practice, and you have a master program coming up. Yeah, um, so I, I used to do a lot of teaching. I used to teach in a massage school and, and, and did a lot of workshops and, and, and internationally did things. And for the last, I don't know, maybe 15 years, I really have, it's been a time of reorganization, doing more writing than teaching. And um, I have felt very strongly recently that it's time to come back out. And so I am going to um, do a, a master class in, in mentoring of people who really seriously want to use frequency and attention, the quality of our attention as a healing force. Wonderful. So it's going to be partly online and partly in person in my my idea is that there will be places all around the country of, you know, groups that are that are um, engaged in it. Three of the weeks it will be online and then one of the weeks I will come and we'll have a full, um, a full day of uh, skill development. Beautiful. Yeah. And uh, the work that you do with your husband, are you working on anything exciting and interesting there now? Oh, he's right in the midst of some of the really big stuff happening now with the UFO um, consciousness awareness. He he has been in um, possession of some material for a while that seems like it didn't seems that it may have come from a craft, and and so he's involved in a lot of scientific uh, investigation into it. That's going to be on Netflix soon, and that will be an interesting program. Of course, we don't know yet. How the, how the scientific analysis is going to come out, but either way, it'll be interesting. <laughs> oh, wonderful. wonderful. I look forward to reading this next book. <laughs> <laughs> it has a lot of interesting things in it. <laughs> Beautiful. So thank you, Cynthia. And, and tell uh, people how they can find out more about your programs. Um, so explorationsinenergy.com is my energy website. And if they go there, I sh should be updating it shortly. I'm hoping to be updating it shortly with all of the information. They can also just email me at um, energyexplorations at gmail. Beautiful. And Cynthia is spelled with an S. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're looking to search for her. Uh, I also wanted to mention... Um, that she has these books, these path, these three books. She's an author of a number of books, 
but these three books in the series, The Path of Energy, The Path of Emotions, and The Path of Presence are, are wonderful to read, and I highly recommend them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time today. Oh, so. thanks for, for doing this. It was a real pleasure. And, you know, good luck with everything you're doing. You, you, you're making such a nice message into the world. It's lovely. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so this is um, Adventures in Consciousness, the conversation you. you're listening to. Um, we are going to go to break now. And when we come back, I have a meditation experience. I call them journey experience that I'd like to share with you. That's called um, the elementals and it's the elements of creation. So look forward to having you come back. Thank you. Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going Om? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. There is no greater mystery in life than you. So why not take a fully experiential plunge into the depths of your being to uncover and retrieve all the secrets and wisdom your soul is crying out for you to know? If you enjoy Adventures in Consciousness, The Conversation, you'll love Adventures in Consciousness, The Course. Join Jennifer in this unique 13-week series of journeys specifically designed to unlock the mysteries of yourself. Each week, you'll journey progressively deeper into the meta realm where, freed from the limitations of your mind, you'll get to play and explore the inner and outer reaches of your awareness. The next series of Adventures in Consciousness, the course, is starting soon. Find out more and stake your place at jenniferivanko.com. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly Lights out. Good night. and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. So welcome back. I'm uh, excited to share with you today another journey. Um, in this one, we're going to experience the elements of creation. I'd like to use uh, certain words that are Sanskrit words, the ancient words. And the language um, that was used in Sanskrit is a very powerful word. It holds the resonance, the vibration of the meaning of the word. So just, for example, saying the word akasha in that that means space, akasha, you're actually experiencing akasha and vibrating that out and resonating that out. These first languages were, were created by people who were communing with God and creation and the world around them, whereas our later languages were created more from the mind and from concepts and ideas and, and communication. So there's a lot of power in these words. So we move through these um, different levels of creation the, um, using the elementals and seeing how they flow both outside of us in our extended body and inside in our um, physical body. So go ahead and make yourself comfortable. Please do not have um, 
anything, any interruptions while you're doing this, because we will go pretty deep. And this is about a 20 minute meditation. Enjoy. So let's begin with your eyes closed. Let's bring your awareness to your breath as you breathe in and out. In and out. And now let's deepen that breath into long, slow belly breaths in through the nose. Hold. Out through the mouth. Hold. And continue. Like this. As you breathe in, imagine breathing in a light blue color, a sky blue energy. Each breath in, a gentle wave of this energy, this prana. And each breath out, going a little deeper, a little more into that peace, that stillness. Now bringing your awareness to your body, beginning with your toes, going so relaxed. Your toes and your feet now, so relaxed. And moving your awareness slowly upward, up to your shins and your calves. Relaxing and listening deeply to your body as you go. Relaxing even more. Your knees. Your thighs and moving on up to your hips now. And where your awareness goes, the prana goes, that sky blue energy. Imagining that you are painting your body sky blue inside and out. On your next in-breath, breathe in the energy all the way up to your base of your spine and letting it flow into your abdomen, nourishing all of your organs with this prana energy, this sky blue. Now breathing up your spine, up into your rib cage and your back. All going sky blue. Your heart, your lungs. And now breathing up over your shoulders, releasing all the tension and stress in your shoulders. Flowing down your arms now, that sky blue, down to your elbows, and all the way to your fingertips. 
moving the energy now up your neck to the back of your head and to your chin, your mouth, all blue, your nose, your eyes, your forehead, relaxing even more. And on the next in-breath, breathing all the way up to the top of your head now, so that your whole body is now sky blue and so relaxed. Now take a deep breath in and release, allowing yourself to slip into a gentle resting rhythm with your breath as we begin our journey now, a journey through the elements of creation. We know that we are connected through our extended body with everything around us, imagining that connection to nature, to the world, and even out into the stars and the universe. For we are in the universe, and the universe is within us. And those elements of creation, the elements play around us and within us, so now, as if in a dream, I'd like you to imagine with a flicker of intention, you can travel up into the heavens and find yourself now floating, floating in space, high above the earth. As vividly as you can, imagining what it's like to float there and see the earth below you. As you turn away from the earth, you find yourself surrounded by the stars floating in deep space. Imagine seeing clearly before you all of the stars and the constellations becoming aware of the vastness of space. Space, it is the open expanse that holds everything, contains everything. Inside us, it is the same. It is a gap between ourselves. the space in our lungs and between our tissues. Space, in creation, it is a place of pure potential, a place between the thoughts where any new thought, new inspiration may arise. The ancient Sanskrit word for space is akasha, akasha. So bringing your awareness now to your third eye and becoming aware of the vibration, the sound of this word as you repeat it to yourself three times, akasha. Now in this space of peace and stillness, this space of pure potential, I invite you to take a few moments to consider a beautiful soul question. The question, what do I want? What do I really, really want? 
allowing yourself to be surprised by any soul desires that come to you now. Now, coming back to my voice as we continue this journey through the elements of creation. Arising from this space, from Akasha, there is movement, and this movement becomes the element of air. And with this movement, with this air, the sense of touch is awakened. Imagine now the light caress of a gentle breeze on a warm day. And now becoming aware of the air that is around you in this moment. Bringing your awareness to your own breath. Notice the air as it passes your nose. Following that air down into your body. And know that the air, this element, reflects all the movements within our body. This includes the movements of your thoughts. As you settle into this flow of breath within you, notice again the movement of air around you. The Sanskrit word for air is vayu, vayu. With your awareness both inside you with the breath and around you with the air, begin to repeat silently to yourself three times, Vayu. Now reflecting once again on that soul question, what do I really want? And exploring the soul desires that came to you as thoughts. Choose one thought you would like to follow. It could be a project like writing a book or maybe improving your health, getting in shape, a new relationship. Anything you'd like to create in your life. Take the next few moments, reflect on your thoughts and choose one. Now coming back to my voice as we continue this journey through the elements of creation. In creation, we move from the space of pure potential, akasha, and then into the movement of inspiration, vayu. And from this movement comes friction and transformation. The transformation is fire. Once again, we can reflect on the stars and the sun, the element of fire that is all around us. And 
within us it is the digestive fire allowing us to digest the food that nourishes us that digests our thoughts the Sanskrit word for fire is tejas tejas All of the energies that come into us are transformed into something that we can use through Tejas. Now bringing your awareness to your solar plexus, that sun energy within, repeat to yourself silently, Tejas. Now, coming back to what you desire, the one thought you chose that you wish to see become a reality. And imagine now, as if in a dream, that you can observe a movie in front of you, a movie that moves through time, observing this thought, this idea, transforming into a reality. And you can witness now all of the steps required to make it real. Now, coming back to my voice, as we continue this journey through the elements of creation, remembering from the space, the pure potential, Akasha, comes a movement of inspiration, Vayu, and then the transformation with Tejas. And from the transformation energies comes the connectivity, the connectivity that is water, in nature, it is water that holds everything together. Within our body, it is all the fluids, and we can sense those fluids moving like the currents of the ocean, like the tides. Water, the ancient word for water is Jala, Jala. Imagining the vast ocean inside of us, as well as outside, as you repeat the word three times, Jala. Coming back to your desire and recognizing the steps that are there before you, the steps to transform it into a reality. And now we bring in Jala, the connections. Again, imagining you can move forward in time as if in a dream. And this time, observe the patterns, the people, synchronicities and the support that arises to help you fulfill your desire. Now, coming back to my voice, as we continue our journey, 
Remembering from the space of pure potential comes a movement of inspiration and the transformation and the connection. And we come to the final element, the element of earth. Connecting outside to the planets, the mountains, the rocks. All of nature, all that is earth. And then reflecting inside the bones, the muscles, the solid form of our body. Both inside and outside, it is earth that richly grounds us. The ancient word is prithavi, prithavi. Repeat it three times silently to yourself. Prithavi. Now coming back to your desire, and as vividly as you can, imagine experiencing the reality of your desire now. With all of your inner senses open, Imagine you can see it, hear it, feel it, taste it, and smell it. I'll watch the time. Now take a deep breath in and release, releasing all of your thoughts and questions and creations, allowing the universe to work out the details as you bring your awareness back to your breath. Following your breath now back into your body and into this moment. Becoming aware now of your fingers and your toes. Imagining a red energy, a warm red energy that flows down from your head to your toes. And stretching back and feeling how wonderful it is to be in this creation. And taking your time now, and when you're ready, slowly opening your eyes and coming back. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the journey today. I am working on a uh, new web page to add. Where we'll, we will have these journeys for you to download and to experience the audio file in case you want to continue. Um, and of course, we have the Adventures in Consciousness, the course, which we go into many of these types of journeys to explore the different levels of self. We have the physical realm, the psychological, the spiritual, and then the mythic realm. And we do this over a period of a year, actually, um, in, in three-month um, little parts series. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this conversation today with Cynthia. I really encourage you to look, check out her books. The Power of Energy is the first one that I read. And I also wanted to mention again about how much you have within you to um, explore your own journey, your own adventure. 
you have so much um, possibility and you are so much more than you dare to dream. And I'm finding that coming together in these kind of conversations and in these groups that encourage you to, um, to encourage you to your own greatness. Uh, that is the path I think we all really need to share right now because we want to find the solutions that we're, that are uh, challenging us right now. And we do that by going beyond what we know, beyond the habits, beyond the uh, reality that we think we know and finding something new, something different and reaching beyond. So again, I am so grateful that you joined me today and I look forward to seeing you again, same time, same place, uh, every first and third Tuesday. Thank you. Have a beautiful day.